What's up everyone and welcome back to Hate Watchers. Today we're doing our breakdown and review of the sixth episode of The Last of Us, entitled Kin. Let's jump into the breakdown, right after you drop a like on the video as it helps our videos reach more fans out there. Spoilers ahead. We open up with a flashback of Henry killing himself, just in case we all forgot with nine days and a Super Bowl since the last episode. We jump ahead three months, where these, uh, well-fed natives are running an animal gymnastics center. Joel and Ellie are robbing them for soup and directions, but unfortunately they had some magic mushrooms earlier, and they're not very helpful, and they leave with no good information on Tommy's whereabouts. Joel has a panic attack, realizing he's going to have to be with Ellie for a while longer. They push on through the global warming and make camp for the night. Apparently, Ellie grabs some of the couple's mushrooms and wants to keep the party going with some booze. Ellie asks Joel if he had to sleep with any animal, what would it be and why? Sheep. They're quiet do what they're told. So, just you and a bunch of sheep. Romantic. Ellie questions her decision to get the jab. It'll work, right? The vaccine. It's a little late to start wondering. Joel awakens from his sheepy dream to find Ellie telling him to get his lazy ass up. They make their way across this bridge when suddenly, nothing happens. They come across a hydroelectric plant like where they found Tommy in the game, and then, Nothing happens, and they keep moving. Out of nowhere, the cast of Yellowstone rides over the hill and takes them by surprise. They brought a dog to show off all the tricks they've taught it. It gets scared by Ellie's face, but eventually comes to like her, just as the creators are hoping we will. Joel says they're looking for his brother Tommy, and the group takes them to their nice little town called Jackson. Joel sees someone who looks like Tommy and screams his name, and the man comes over and says, no, I'm Steve. Joel says, you're Tommy enough for me, and accepts him as his new brother, and says we're gonna call you Tommy from now on because it's easier. And Ellie gets jealous that Joel has another friend to play with. Turns out this is Tommy's wife, Maria. I should have known because she looks exactly like the game version. Incredible casting. Joel gets distracted from the conversation when he sees one of his fantasies playing out. Hey Joel, check it. <laughs> Later, Tommy tells Joel the nearest Firefly hideout is in Colorado, and then the brothers argue, ending with Joel saying, just like a hooker, he'll be gone in the morning. Joel sees someone with hair like a sheep and gets excited. Ellie is given a period cup, because apparently her menstrual struggles are an important theme in this show. During a random haircut, Ellie learns that Joel once had a daughter. Joel tells Tommy that Ellie's immune, and Tommy has no discernible reaction to this news. Joel talks about being afraid of his slipping abilities, and he tries to pawn Ellie off on Tommy for him to take to Colorado, and Tommy eventually agrees. Then Joel and Ellie fight about whether or not the Super Bowl was rigged, and the conversation gets so heated that they decide to go their separate ways. In the morning, Tommy and Ellie are about to head out when they find Joel stealing a horse he was going to use to wrangle up some sheep, but he gets caught and guilt-tripped into going with Ellie. Joel demolishes Ellie in a shooting contest, and the two ride off into the sunset. After 48 minutes of conversation, they reach their destination. As they approach ECU, Ellie asks Joel what a bighorn is. Bighorns. What does that mean? It's kind of sheep. We'll see. You step closer to your dream. They find the firefly symbol, but no fireflies. They then search the building, but only find some monkeys trying to do science. So it's pretty much on par with our medical industry today. A guy attacks Joel, and Joel snaps his neck but Ellie notices that Joel stole the handle of the guy's baseball bat, so he and Ellie have to get out of there quick. Joel, well into his 50s, can't keep up with this shit anymore and lays down for a nap, and the episode comes to an end. Well, we've reached that point in the video where we have to decide if this episode was a great watch or a hate watch. This is a tough one to grade, but we're giving it the benefit of the doubt and a great watch designation. But this episode was just good, not great. And it's getting that good rating because we did get some decent development of Joel and Ellie's relationship with some good meaningful scenes that are the culmination of their relationship evolving during their journey together. Up to this point, we've been kinda lukewarm to this adaptation's handling of their relationship and it's felt clunky. So there's an argument to be made that the show hasn't done enough to earn the kind of emotional scenes we got here. But viewed in a silo, this episode handled their relationship well. Now, our biggest issue with this episode is how Joel was portrayed. We don't see Joel from the first game breaking down crying, talking about how he's afraid of failing. In isolation, it's not a big deal. But taking a broader view of this show and the two games we have to compare it to, it's a concerning take on the character. A lot of people, ourselves included, were worried that the show would choose to base their Joel off of the Joel we got in the second game. 
In that second game, Joel is a weak and broken man, and it was a pretty drastic change from the Joel you play as in the first game, and it was a change many people took issue with. So now seeing Joel crying and wanting to give up is A, concerning, and B, unnecessary. It's okay for a character to be broken, and to be afraid, and to have feelings, but it doesn't require them to break down in tears. It's inconsistent with the Joel from the first game, and more importantly, the Joel we've known thus far in the show. And it just feels like an attempt to unnecessarily soften a masculine character. It's okay to still have a character who's masculine, even masculine to a fault. You don't need to have them bawling their eyes out for the audience to see their internal struggle, to resonate with the pain and emotions they're feeling. And these feelings he has are supposed to be his fear of failing Ellie and losing her like he did his daughter. But we really haven't gotten the requisite development between him and Ellie up to this episode to justify this pity party. Also, where were the tears for Tess? It just doesn't track with the rest of the season up to this point. We can also see that much of this episode could have been boring for some viewers. It was a slow burn at times, and definitely didn't need to be as long as it was. Personally, we would have preferred to spend an episode with Joel and Ellie working their way through the wilderness in the dead of winter before arriving in Jackson. It could have been more effective at building up and justifying Joel and Ellie's relationship, and there's any number of problems they could have run into out there. From a pocket of infected, to wildlife, to raiders, or even just an emotional scene of them coming across some less fortunate folk who died in some tragic way. We didn't need to go full speed ahead to Jackson after last episode, especially when they could have spent this episode reflecting on what happened with Sam and Henry in the last one. There were a number of references to the game which were good, such as Joel's information gathering slash interrogation technique, where he asks two people the same question and compares their answers. Ellie's interest in space and astronauts, Eastern Colorado University being their destination, and Joel wanting to pawn Ellie off on Tommy, it all tracks with the game's events. The scene where Ellie confronts Joel about leaving her behind was lifted right out of it too. Now Joel's injury in the game is way more severe, but the general idea is the same in this version. All in all, this episode was fine, but we think there's some concerning cracks with Joel's character that are starting to deepen. As we're somewhat familiar with the game, we end up with a different perspective than most viewers. So what about you? Did this episode seem to drag on at times for you? How would you rate the show's job so far at properly developing Joel and Ellie's relationship? Do you think they've done a good job of showing them grow close enough to justify the emotional weight they're trying to put into this episode's scenes? Let us know in the comments below. Remember to like the video if you liked it, and click the subscribe button below to stay up to date on The Last of Us. Thank you for joining us today, and we'll catch you on the next one.